Hey there, friends. Sometimes we need to remind each other and ourselves in some cases why we have the Second Amendment. We need to learn to appreciate the fact that we, as a country and one of the biggest and most powerful superpowers in the world, that we have a Second Amendment also. So internally, we are equally strong as we are outside of our borders, if you can actually claim that we have borders. So sometimes we have to remind the rest of the world that we have a Second Amendment. I think people outside of the borders of the United States sometimes look at the United States as a military power and not necessarily realizing that its citizenry are equally powerful. In other words, if you look at the citizenry as a whole, because of the Second Amendment, we are super powerful. Yeah, everybody says, oh, you know, all the um, uh, advanced countries in the world uh, that don't have the gun problem that the United States does. The United States also has a Second Amendment that allows us to be protected from that gun problem that the rest of the world does, in fact, actually have is regarding a gun problem. They just don't have a Second Amendment that allows their citizens to protect themselves from that, quote, gun problem. And they also don't capture it properly either. We overcapture gun-related violence in the United States, and they don't capture theirs at all in many cases. Well, you may or may not have heard, but our friends over in the Middle East, and I use that term super loosely, have called it upon themselves, or taken it upon themselves, I should say, to call tomorrow, Friday the 13th, their day of jihad, quote unquote. Former Hamas chief Khalid Michal called for protests across the Muslim world on Friday in support of the Palestinians and for the peoples of neighboring countries to join the fight against Israel. Now, real quick, he does say the Muslim world, but you have to understand the way the Muslim mind and the Islamic extremists think they look at the world, the entire world, as the Muslim world that they just haven't finished conquering yet. So don't be mistaken when you see someone make the claim that the Muslim world is where they're calling for this at, that, oh, it's just in co countries that are run by Muslims. Absolutely not. They see the globe as the Muslim world. They just haven't completed domination of it yet. He went on to say, we must head to the squares and streets of the Arab and Islamic world on Friday. Again, meaning the entire globe. Michal, who is based in Qatar, said the government and peoples of Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt have a bigger duty to support the Palestinians. Now, he went on to say that this day of jihad should show anger, especially next Friday, which is tomorrow, Friday the 13th, in Muslim countries and also among Muslim diaspora around the world. Now, just to be clear, when they talk about Muslim diaspora, that's where they're talking about the rest of the world. So they specifically talk about the surrounding countries around Israel, but whenever they mention Muslim diaspora, they're talking about Muslims who have been dispersed throughout the entire world. So again, that's where they lay that blanket of saying the entire globe. He called it the Friday of Al-Aqsa flood. He said, this will send a message of rage to Zionists and to America. That's us. He also asked for financial help from all Muslims around the world to help with their money. I guess this is a fundraiser for their financial jihad, as he calls it. He asked political pressure from Muslim leaders and Muslim nations to stop Israel's military invasion of Gaza. And lastly, he said the most important thing. He asked all Muslims around the world to carry jihad by their souls, to fight and be martyrs for Al-Aqsa. He wants Muslims to fight against the Jews, starting with Muslims who live in countries surrounding Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. Remember, he also called for the rest of the world to go to the borders and try to enter each by his own means. He said, this is the time for jihad to be applied on the ground rather than just in theory. Now, some people like conservative commentator Joey Manorino stated in a now viral post on X, which is Twitter, that Americans should quote, not leave their homes unless there is an emergency, avoid public transit, avoid airplanes, avoid travel. Now, some people have tried to sweep this under the rug, which kind of makes you wonder also, and saying, oh, that's not what they mean. You're taking what they're saying too literal. This is a religion. They're speaking in a different form of context. No, I'm afraid not. In fact, some people have tried to say that this is no real threat, that the FBI has come out and said that it's not a threat. First of all, if you're putting your confidence in the FBI to protect you right now, might I remind you some of the things that the FBI has done that's not quite so American here lately. Might I also remind you that in terms of the Israeli thing that went down, 
if we're putting our confidence in our very own government to protect us or to give us good advice as far as protecting ourselves, remember that they've been trying to disarm us all along, right? They've been calling all of us terrorists all along. And now they're saying, don't pay attention to the real terrorists. They literally are calling us terrorists on a regular basis. The DOJ and everybody else, from Merrick Garland to the president, everyone else calls us, Second Amendment activists, the true terrorists in America. Yet they're trying to tell you, don't worry about the actual terrorists who want all of us to die. And I also want to remind you that let's remember that these super elite, well-trained, there's danger at every corner. Israelis somehow never saw this coming. They have people coming through their borders on motorbikes and walking with sticks and rockets and slingshots, flying over in formation, I might add, in powered gliders, these little ultra uh, uh, lights, in formation. No one ever saw that coming. We have Israel, who supposedly can shoot down with the precision of a pinprick all of these missiles coming from Gaza, yet they have hang gliders, powered hang gliders, puttering across the borders into Israel at a speed of probably a whopping seven miles an hour, yet they can't stop a single one of them. So if they can't stop, if their own government in Israel could not stop this threat, a lot of questions here, don't rely on your government, the United States, to protect you and feed you good advice. They are trying to keep you from being worried. They're trying to keep you from putting your head on a swivel. You don't think the federal government in the United States would love for America to be attacked? They're all safe. Joe Biden and all his little cohorts and his true handlers, whoever's really calling the shots, there's no real threat to them. There's never a real threat to them. Just like the leaders in Israel may have been okay with a few broken eggs, with Hamas busting open their borders and killing some people and doing all the things that they did. You don't think our leaders here in the United States would be okay with that? Remember the Patriot Act, all that cool stuff that went down after 9-11? You don't think that our government here in the United States would be okay with a few broken eggs here so that they could institute a little bit more control, a little bit more, oh, now we have to ban guns. Oh, now we need martial law. You don't think they would be okay with that? Let me tell you something. You are your own first responder. You guys need to ignore what the federal government is telling you not to worry about and worry about the things that are literally in writing. I also want to remind you guys that the FBI put this statement out. Look at the date here, October the 9th. That was this Monday. Reuters put the story out about this day of jihad on October 11th, two days later. And mostly, but not so much, directly related news. You can get this F-A-F-O United t-shirt at the link down below in my description. That's the message that we need to be sending to all of these wackos out there who somehow think that the leadership, quote unquote, in America from the White House and all these weak, milquetoast clowns that we have, those people do not represent the true, actual backbone of America. You want to bring jihad to these shores? Many of you are not going home. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Peace out, everyone.